Hi, Carl San. Good morning. Good thank morning. Assalamualaikum. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Thank you. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure to have you here. <laughs> thank you very much. Good morning. Waiting for the ambassador and the honorable minister, and then we will start shortly. Sure. Thank you. Sound to me. Hello, hello. Assalamualaikum. 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 How are you? Yes, I'm fine. How are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Ramzan Mubarak. Ramzan Mubarak. Salam. Shabai ke shubhacha. Right. Yeah. Do you want to say office or do you want to say office? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we have to go to the office. Yes, we have বাসায় না We are expecting the Honourable Minister to log in in less than five minutes. So thank you all for your patience. As soon as he joins in, we will start shortly. Thank you.
I cannot hear anybody. I was wondering if any audio is going on. We are just waiting for the Honourable Minister. There's um, an electricity problem at the Minister's house, so thank you for your patience. As soon as he joins in, we're going to start the event. Okay, thank you. President Sir, Monsu Mahato join Koreshan. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm pleased to inform you that the Honorable Minister has joined us despite his busy schedule. Sir, Can you hear us? If you allow, we will start the event right away. Just on go. Okay. Should the watch an hour again? Chamber team, can you please check with the secretary of the minister? Can we just start off and maybe he can join in when he's able to speak? Okay, sir. So, Salam Alaikum. 
If the Honorable Minister allows, uh, we can start the program. So shall we start? Welcome, sir. Assalamualaikum. Welcome, sir. Sorry for the, the disruption in the, I heard that you are having some issues at home. But thank you for joining us despite your busy schedule. If you kindly allow, we can start the program because I know you have some pressing engagements. You will be traveling shortly as well. So uh, if you allow, can we start the event, sir? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today's uh, chief guest, uh, Mr. Noor Majid Mahmoud Humayun, MP, our Honorable Minister for the Ministry of Industries, the Government of Bangladesh. We have with us today our guest of honor, Mr. Ito Naoki, Ambassador, uh, the Embassy of Japan in Bangladesh. Uh, our keynote presenter, Mr. Taskin Ahmed, Man Deputy Managing Director of IFAD Group. Uh, Mr. Mohammad Tohidu Zaman, Managing Director of Property Industries. Uh, Uttara Group Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Mathieu Rahman. The President of Bavida, Mr. Abdul Haq. Mr. John Dunham, Economic and Indo-Pacific Affairs Unit Chief of the U.S. Embassy in Dhaka. Uh, we have with us the JICA uh, Country Representative, Mr. Hayakawa Yuho. Assalamu alaikum, my colleagues from DCCI, ladies and gentlemen, and a very good morning to all of you. I would like to welcome you all to this webinar titled The Automobile Industry Development, uh, Present Situation and Future Prospects. I'm very thankful to the chief guests, the keynote presenter, the other panelists, our special guests, uh, for being here today despite their busy schedule. So without further ado, let's just start. Uh, I wanted to highlight the fact that the automobile industry in Bangladesh has recorded a steady growth on accelerated, uh, consistent economic growth, uh, huge uh, transport infrastructure network development, increasing purchasing power, and emergence of ride-sharing platforms. Um, our automobile sector is dominated by imported, reconditioned, and new vehicles, mostly from Japan, China, India, and with a tiny share of the Europe and the US markets. Um, of the different types of vehicles, uh, motorcycles are almost 80%, total amount followed by 7%, which is passenger cars, and then we have 5% commercial vehicles. So we will look into all these uh, details when we hear our uh, valued keynote presentation from the presenter himself. But considering the untapped potentials of uh, the automobile industry, a 10-year-long uh, roadmap titled uh, Bangladesh Automobile Sector Roadmap and a draft uh, development policy for the automobile auto manufacturing uh, by the Ministry of Industries was initiated. Now, prior to uh, COVID-19, the automobile market was growing 15 to 20% with 12% in auto parts every year. However, COVID-19 made a slash in demand pretty much in all sectors. Now, primarily since we're talking about the automobile sector, globally with no exception in the domestic market. Um, according to the BRTA, the Bangladesh Road Transport Authority, the motor vehicle registration decreased by 24% just in the pandemic year of 2020. And um, long story short, in line with the uh, government policy for import substitute, industry development for local market and export orientation, Automobile industry actually has the potential to be one of the leading industrial sectors in the country. However, absence of uh, long-term policy, tax structure, domestic source of raw materials, uh, relevant human resources, and backward linkage limit the automobile uh, manufacturing industry. Now, alongside the dearth of the much required research and development and innovation facilities that we are always having a lacking of, these are actually holding back our industry. Now, in a study, we saw that uh, JICA found a local car manufacturing for foreign investors is not viable unless the annual market demand exceeds 100,000 against the current demand of existing 75,000. And this is estimated demand would be in 2026 as per our growth trend. And in this regard, it is essential to forecast and identify the needs, the challenges, 
the investment preparedness to function our local automobile industry. So we feel that um, all stakeholders of this industry need a consensus to progress the automobile industry. Uh, and with this expectation, I would definitely like to thank all of you distinguished speakers, our guest of honor, our chief guest for joining us uh, in this webinar. And I also hope that our honorable chief guest will enlighten us uh, on the development of the automobile industry. This will actually help us diversify our industrial base and steer our economy towards achieving the upcoming economic transformation, which this country has been trying to achieve under the valiant leadership of our prime minister. And I firmly believe we are going to prepare uh, some solid recommendations at the end of today's webinar. So without further ado, I would like to invite uh, our keynote presenter today, Mr. Taskin Ahmed, the Deputy Managing Director of IFAD Group. Mr. Taskin Ahmed. Thank you very much. I uh, would uh, really appreciate, uh, please allow the share screen. A very good morning. Uh, just um, share whiteboard. Permission to share screen, please. I'm sorry. Uh, everybody can see this, uh, but the presentation now? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Fantastic. A very good morning. It's our greatest pleasure to have Honorable Minister Nurul Majid Mahmoud Humayun, Ministry of Industries, uh, to grace the Dhaka Chamber webinar on automobile policy, uh, industry, a roadmap to the future. We also thank uh, our His Excellency, Mr. Itunyaoki, Honorable Ambassador, Embassy of Japan, as a guest of honor and distinguished guests, panel speakers, a very well, warm welcome. I, Taskin Ahmed, Deputy Managing Director of IFAD Group, addressing as a keynote speaker. First of all, we'll straight away go uh, to the presentation that we have today. We would like to uh, have a glimpse of the Bangladesh economy and its progression over the half or five decades of its uh, independence. Obviously, uh, we have a 1% growth rate with the life expectancy of males over 73 years and women always live longer. It's 75 uh, years and higher, with an urban population gradually increasing to uh, almost 38%. One of the greatest advantages we have as a demography, uh, demographic advantage is the almost 60, 65% of active population, which creates a large base of low uh, cost labor. Another country profile is uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great success. In past 20 years, we have brought down our poverty from almost 50% to below 10% in 20 years. And our per capita income stands at over $2,060. The transformation of the economy, obviously over the past 50 years from a low income agrarian society, Bangladesh is now a lower middle income country poverty rate since uh, independence has come down from 73% to below 10% till date. And Bangladesh has become a role model for fighting poverty and women empowerment. And at today's date, we are striding towards uh, middle income country status by 2021. We want to uh, put uh, effort on the top five economic fundamentals, which has really positioned Bangladesh as an Asian tiger. One of the greatest story is our growing middle income uh, class group, the fast paced urbanization, economic growth and currency stability, geopolitical support from China and India and political stability. Here, we just want to uh, share the per, uh, GDP situation with respect to our major manufacturer uh, neighbor, India, where our per capita constant price is still staggering behind India. But in 2020, our per capita income in US dollar has bypassed India. Bangladesh has been lauded as one of the frontline nations to implement the Millennium Development Goals by achieving several targets ahead of time. And inspired by this, the country has set a vision to achieve the sustainable development goals within 2030. Now we uh, take a look directly to the automobile industry, its present situation and the future prospects. Any economy, 
uh, in a developing country is backed up by the infrastructure projects and the economy it uh, backs up to. Bangladesh has seen one of the greatest developments and uh, going forward with the infrastructure projects, which has propelled the demand for passenger cars starting from two wheelers to up to construction vehicles. Our dream Padma Bridge connects 21 districts, over 30 million people. It is expected to be completed by 2022 and would have a direct impact of 1.2% on our GDP. This would transform the automotive sector in the country, connecting the southern part of the nation, a, a major port to the sub-regional uh, mainland. We have our deep sea port coming up, which would have a, having a capacity of 6 million TU handling at a time. And of course, the Rupur nuclear power plant to power almost 2.4 million homes by 2024. We have seen the government has been very cautious and serious about the development of the infras and giving a good share of the allocation every year. And we have seen a constant rise in the allocation in every budget on infrastructure, especially on roads and highways and bridges division. One of the major projects which are propelling the infrastructure growth is our Bangabundu Tunnel in Chittagong, our Padma Bridge, 26 kilometer long Dhaka Expressway. And this has seen over almost $10 billion of FDI within the year of 2020. The implementation of Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal uh, vehicle motor vehicle agreement would is expected to change the platform of auto sector in the connectivity of the region. It is expected to increase the regional trade by over 60%, allowing our three major seaports to, for our uh, neighboring India, Nepal, and Bhutan would have tremendous impact on the growth uh, demand of commercial vehicles across the region. We have seen over the past 10 years a steady growth in the vehicle uh, motor uh, registration, though still in uh, some parts of the country, you know, non-registration remains a challenge for the uh, government. As our president said, almost 80% of the total registered vehicles are motorcycles, 5%, 5 to 7% are being passenger car remaining on commercial purposes. Very truly, as our Honorable Minister also visions about the growth story and the future of automobile sector in, the, uh, in Bangladesh. As a spike in motorcycle sales is anticipated given the skyrocketing demands for delivery and ride sharing apps. Not in addition to it, our sub-regional road developments has spiked the demand of motorcycles over the five, past five years, and it is expected by 2027, the demand for more two-wheeler motorcycle is going to touch um, 1 million units. The government has already published a much-awaited automobile policy for two-wheelers in 2018. This has seen fresh investments over 1,000 crore, both from local and foreign investors. The timely movement by the government has opened the avenue of creating vendor development. The country has seen evolving backward linkages into the two-wheeler sector where components like frames, seat, chain, plastic items has developed. Now the passenger car market, of course, it's been dominated uh, by the Japanese brands where almost still 95% of the cars are imported reconditioned, which is locally known as new cars and barely 5% are brand new vehicles. Until 2018, the sale of reconditioned vehicles uh, were projecting an increasing demand. But uh, in 2019, due to some policy reforms of the government, uh, every year we were uh, the government was getting a support of a staggering almost 3,000 crore uh, of revenue for, through import. But it fell down uh, uh, very significantly uh, due to some changes in government policy. 
government has an ambition plan to shift the passenger car sector from reconditioned car market to a brand new locally assembled sector. As per the final draft of automobile policy, government plans to impose a ban on used car import and giving, in, giving incentives for localization. This would bring in fresh investments to initially assemble, eventually turn the industry into progressive manufacture. Nonetheless, the road transport is the most popular, not only through the world, for commercial transport in Bangladesh, carrying 70% of passengers and cargo. It is significantly cheaper and easier to access all across the country. The commercial vehicle market is valued around over a billion dollars with an estimated CAGR of 12.5%. And we expect with the connectivity and the infrastructure development and the uh, uh, inter-region uh, connectivity opening up, the demand for commercial vehicles is going to have a bullish trend over the next decade. The global commercial vehicle market was valued at $1.32 trillion in 2017. And obviously, the growth has stagnated in the development countries, but Asia-Pacific markets is set to experience the highest growth rate globally due to the growth of mega economies like China, India, and nearby nations. Bangladesh acts as an intersection point between many of these countries and international trade corridors, making its location geostrategically significant as a transport hub. As a sector, from two-wheeler to commercial vehicles, passenger car and tractor as well, it's estimated over a billion dollars and its growth is propelled by the power infrastructural developments in the nation. The light commercial vehicle, which is commonly known as LCV, is the greatest, it is expected to grow the highest because of the sub-regional connectivity development and the Padma Bridge coming up. It will propel the need uh, to, for small scale uh, transport of goods for daily consumptions. The Bangladesh commercial vehicle industry remain, uh, remains dependent on imports from Asian countries, specifically India, Japan, and China. This includes both reconditioned and new vehicles. India is the sixth largest automobile manufacturer in the world, and Bangladesh is one of its potential market as government is also moving towards from an import dependency to a local progressive manufacturing, all the manufacturers of India and Japan are planning to shift and capitalize uh, the incentives offered by the government. The local market share holders in specifically in commercial vehicles also are propelling and preparing to expand their productions locally. All that we have discussed in two-wheeler sector, in the passenger car sector, and in commercial vehicle sector, government has a very good vision to localize and to make sure to reap the benefit out of it. Today, the auto component market, domestically, it's roughly 1,500 crores, and commonly all the items are imported from the manufacturing nations, mainly on assemb engine assembly parts, oil filter, clutch items, brake items, axle child parts, spring lifts, body components, and so on. This can be made the future. Today, the world auto component market of the world is estimated over $2.4 trillion. Likewise, our honorable prime minister always has a vision to diversify uh, the we need a strong poly, formulate a policy and leverage the light engineering sector and diversify our export basket by attracting foreign investors into the nation likewise our prime minister has timely visioned and declared 2020 as a light engineering uh, year i think with this we can go ahead look for a better export basket and a uh, raising a second uh, sector as an automobile uh, sector. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Tasneen Ahmed. Thank you for your elaborate presentation. Uh, I think uh, we have a copy of the presentation. I would request the IT team to share it with the chat box so everyone can have access to all the information that he has highlighted. Um, 
Okay, so we have a host of about almost 10 speakers today. So I would like to request everybody to keep their uh, speeches within a stipulated time. I would honestly request you to finish within three to maximum five minutes. And uh, at the very outset, I would like to welcome, I can see here, Mr. Mathieu Rahman, the Chairman and Managing Director of Uttara Motors. Sir, over to you. So I must uh, remember my thanks to the president and the uh, guests here. So, uh, assalamu alaikum, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. I appreciate uh, the extensive study done on the by the uh, automobile sector the keynote speaker. Automobile sector development needs, depends on the country's infrastructure development. Bangladesh is going for massive infrastructure development in the last five years. As a result, development of highways, Padma Bridge, expressways, deep sea ports, and many land ports, SEZ and Konkuli Tunnel, etc., etc., under process. These will create huge potential and opportunities for automobile use and development of new automobile industries, local components, manufacturers, and opening of export market. In the study, the keynote speaker could have focused about government policy for automobile industry development as, the, as this is the need of the hour. An industry-friendly policy will help local and FDI in Bangladesh. All over the world, if you see the countries who have developed their country, they are dependent on the most in automobile sector and sub-sectors. So we are far behind. In this sector, we have a huge potential and opportunities to become an automobile exporter in the world market. Such policy must be valid for longer time, not uh, less than 10 years. If necessary, policy can be amended with the consultation with the stakeholders. Frequent changes in the policy and tariff will discourage investment in the country. In this regard, government has to bear the loss of revenue for certain period. In the long run, the revenue will increase. For example, government had lost revenue initially for two years from two year motorcycle sector. But now the government is the revenue is increasing year, year on year due to increase of production volume and large amount of investment from the private sector. Also, government cut down revenue in case of power and gas development due to which the country benefited by earning export pursuits. And local revenue from the growth of the industrial sector. Therefore, the government must support automobile industrialization without any preconditions. Another point to mention that the government has decided to make a separate policy for recognition and use car importer, which could have been mentioned in the keynote paper. In the keynote paper, a detailed roadmap could have been given. For automobile industry development means a competitive automobile industrial policy is required. I have many more points to be mentioned here, but due to short of time, I would like to uh, end my speech uh, here. Let me convey my thanks and gratitude to the DCCA president and his board, keynote speaker, and the uh, planning committee. Convener and members, panel discussions, print and electronic media, participants, His Excellency, the Ambassador of Japan to Bangladesh, and the Chief Guest Honorable Minister of Industries. I especially like to convey my gratitude to the Minister of Industries for supporting the whole industry development policy. Thank you very much, Paul. Allah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your uh, vote of confidence in DCCI. And of course, needless to mention, uh, we have the most um, <clears throat> accommodating minister for, for accommodating all our policy needs, we must say. So, um, I mean, needless to mention, we always have his support and blessings. Uh, at this point of time, I would like to bring in a manufacturer. So, we have with us today Mr. Toyudu Zaman, the Managing Director of Pragati Industries. We want to hear his views on what has been happening in Bangladesh, which all these investors find so challenging and something that you on behalf of the government have been running so successfully. And nowadays we see a lot of your cars on the roads as before it was a 
antique piece of machinery, I must say. But nowadays, property uh, machines are always on the road and something we all bump into. What is your success story? Sir, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Actually, uh, our uh, the discussion uh, subject, uh, automobile uh, present situation and the future prospect. If we see the present situation, most of the vehicles uh, come from uh, CBU in CBU uh, 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 complete build unit, and only the little bit manufacturer like uh, manufacturer is assembler like Progoti, some uh, that is bus and truck, Aptab Motors, uh, Ishuju that is uh, Uttara Motors, uh, then uh, another someone have. But actually, our big market. Uh, fulfill the demand uh, through CBO vehicles. Uh, uh, what is our next uh, uh, step to uh, expand the uh, industry? Actually, our desire to uh, build our national vehicles, national uh, car, and uh, fulfill the demands of the uh, vehicle demands uh, uh, through our uh, locally manufactured vehicles. So. In this respect, uh, uh, we have to come uh, more and more assembler. Because you know, uh, only Progoti started 1966 and assembled so many bus, trucks, and others, this, this. But uh, after uh, sometimes, uh, not uh, uh, this industry, um, uh, uh, BMRE or uh, 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 upgradation. So uh, day by day, that, that is squeezed the capacity of the uh, production segment. So uh, after uh, uh, the present government came to power, uh, then uh, 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 especially uh, <clears throat> some, <clears throat> some uh, advantage uh, to, uh, uh, to advantage to increase the uh, market and policy uh, as, as the instructed from our ministry, and uh, 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 our prime minister, we already started, uh, you know, the uh, present capacity of the uh, PIL factory uh, will be increased through uh, international consultant. We already, uh, 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 because we are uh, initially starting the assembling, now we are uh, going to, uh, from assembler to progressive manufacturer. How is it is possible? Progressive manufacturing uh, needs uh, the um, uh, local parts localization. These parts localization, you know, uh, we if we uh, we already uh, uh, designed and uh, door to the completion of the study, uh, we are going to uh, uh, press shop. You know, if if our complete press shop, then we can uh, all the body parts uh, prepare uh, product here. If needed, then we can bring the raw materials from the uh, uh, imported raw materials. Uh, another way, uh, 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 so many uh, uh, PIL is going to adopt some action plan to become a progressive manufacturer brand through establishing a new state of the art automation car assembling plant. For this purpose, a foreign company has been appointed as a consultant for feasibility study with the detailed drawing, design, cost estimation, layout, list of machinery for all shops, like, like as machine shop, paint shop, press shop, body shop, repair and maintenance shop, etc. Implementation of double cabin pickup of assembled project for the first time in the country, which has already been success, successfully implemented. And also we uh, uh, keep a segment uh, to uh, uh, product the uh, uh, different parts of the uh, double cabin pickup. Uh, to provide after sale service, also we can uh, uh, develop everywhere. To provide affordable cars suitable for use by mid-level government officials and to assemble and supply low-cost cars within the purchasing power of the lower middle and middle class uh, people of the country. <clears throat> PIL moves ahead with plans to build uh, uh, a battery manufacturing plant on a partnership basis. You know, so uh, 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 if the 
if if uh, so many assembler comes then they can also uh, creating the environment of uh, production of the uh, uh, part segment and uh, and uh, and uh, and also needed uh, the uh, every assemble plant need a uh, uh, rnd cell and laboratory that, that, that is oem parts manufacture everyone we will get our uh, so many our university already uh, uh, degree from university diploma from uh, automobile uh, uh, diploma from the institution and if we uh, create the uh, 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 create the scope to work them then they will uh, 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 can they can uh, uh, research and uh, day by day this will be uh, uh, improved okay thank you Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tawidu Rahman. Uh, we look forward to uh, more competition in your industry, so you should ins inspire the uh, fellow manufacturers to join in the bandwagon and see a new industrial base for Bangladesh. We are also hopeful. We were actually expecting another manufacturer here with us today, PHP Automobiles, but due to ill health, he just called today morning and regretted his failure to join today's event. However, uh, we have a host of very intelligent speakers here today. Um, we have with us um, a very interesting speaker today. We have with us uh, Mr. Abdul Hawk, who is the president of Bavida. So my question to Mr. Hawk is, uh, is the automobile industry, is it a threat or an opportunity for the reconditioned vehicles industry? And I believe that we are always, uh, Dhaka Chamber always believes in strong, inclusive stakeholder consultation. So if you see the panel of speakers here today, we have government manufacturers, we have private manufacturers, we have pro-industry, and we are also trying to rehabilitate and secure the investments of the reconditioned uh, vehicle business as well. So we want an inclusive stakeholder discussion. So we want your views on the automobile industry. Sir, over to you. Uh, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, honorable chief guest, honorable minister of industry, guest of honor, his excellency, Mr. Itu, uh, JICA representative and speakers, participants. Thanks to Dhaka Chamber for initiating this wonderful and very timely uh, discussion. I think the first uh, to answer your question, we definitely having almost a half a century's experience in this trade, definitely would welcome the industry. And we have already welcomed, we have in the, our past discussions, we have always said, it's a very good initiative that Bangladesh should definitely come into the area of uh, you know, engineering industry. As uh, even in, uh, by, in our personal discussion with Honorable Ambassador of Japan, I mentioned that, yes, what do we want? is, for example, I fully agree with Jaika's uh, comment that a market with at least 200,000 units should be the you know, right size for uh, buying for manufacturing industry. For example, at the moment, our market is about some 10 to 12,000 units of vehicles, especially passenger cars and SUVs and et cetera. All others, 80% is a motorcycle, as the presenter very correctly said. And challenges are actually uh, what uh, we, we shall suggest that if we see these stories around the world, for example, in South Africa, they are manufacturing vehicles for the last 60 years. And till date, they, have, they could come to about 40%, and 60% they're importing. So they have made a unique policy of uh, revenue or taxation policy that their taxes are like 25 to 39% on the imported one. And for the manufacturing one, they are giving you know, subsidies and supporting. They're also exporting Mercedes and other sort of vehicles to European countries, especially to right and drive countries, et cetera. So our challenge is a market, creation of a market. With our experience, what you can say, government can raise revenue by you know, providing a policy support at the, to increase the market. For example, over a million so-called auto bikes are moving in the country without any registration. It's not less than a million. And Honorable Minister of Industry, I will say that uh, with his prudent 
leadership. That Honorable Minister, I will say that he, uh, for the first time, he's supporting industry uh, with a very strong you know, initiative. And that is uh, the Minister of Industry should, should have been a Minister of Industrial Development rather than only looking after for state-owned enterprises. A Minister of Industry should support entirely, entire industries, not only having you know, a few industries belongs to the government. Uh, so this is the, uh, from uh, Barbida, our, we have already presented our paper last time with the Minister of Industry, and we have made a, we have participated in a study made by, you know, one of the research center. Uh, I think uh, they have made the paper. And uh, at the moment, I would say that for investment, yes, Definitely, it should be welcome. And the challenges, uh, what we can see is, for example, for Babida, we are having about more than 900 members and several thousands of workforces we are, we, we are having with us and billions of takas are invested here in the last 40 years. We have created a market. And definitely, we can also sell the local products if they are coming and the if the market is accepting that. So market economy is there. And competition should be there. And as you, Honorable President, you have very correctly said, it should, it should be you know, a policy that should accommodate everyone to play with a very competitive sort of environment. So for the industry, well, there should be, you should allow security as it is said, okay, but a portion of the manufacturing, there should be a target that minimum 30 to 40% is localized is okay. Or you should give a time frame, for example, Pragati is, assembling for last about 55 years and till that they could not uh, you know uh, create any manufacturing as such what it was supposed to be this is the real scenario but for the trucks and buses the entire market is now dominated by tata ashok leland etc they are also assembling and there was a big opportunity for manufacturing in the trucks and buses segment because the entire market has been almost given to them and what we are playing only with 10, 12,000 vehicles is variety of vehicles is starting from, you know, passenger car to SUVs to, you know, ambulances to special purpose vehicles, et cetera. Such kind of variety of vehicles manufacturing is a very, very big, big challenge. However, I think, for example, Pragati MB said that they are assembling double cabin pickup is good. Uh, such kind of specialized vehicle for army, some special vehicles could be, you know, Assembly and progressively manufactured could be could be done. For example, right. LCB, the presenter very correctly said, LCB is one segment where manufacturing could have been done. Autos, three wheelers, etc., could have been because of the market size, over a million three wheelers are moving. There could have been a manufacturing opportunity. For only 10, 12,000, you know, market size is a very big challenge. Market must be enlarged, and revenue policy must be changed to you know support. Middle class to rise and middle class to afford. Uh, middle class affordability is a very big question. For example, our minimum taxes are 128 percent, sir. Whereas in India, uh, all, there is, I think, only GST is there, no other taxes. So these are the real issues. Uh, so what we would suggest, we are in favor of it, but it must be, you know, the policy must be consistent with that. We have developed a market over 40 years. And we've got huge chunk of investment. We have got our, you know, users' choices we are meeting and keeping into, you know, all these in reality, the policy must be framed with the Ministry of Commerce, Ministry of Finance, National Board of Revenue, and Ministry of Industry, of course, at the helm of the affairs. So from Barbida, we express our hearty thanks to our Dhaka Chamber for, you know, creating, giving us this opportunity. And we should be looking forward to have a very, you know, prudent industrial policy so that that should be sustainable, that should be supportive for the, and, you know, accepting the market realities, we shall be going forward for the automobile industrial policy for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abdul Haq. Uh, we are actually also very hopeful that uh, the Ministry of Industries and personally the Honorable Minister and the secretary has engaged DCCI when drafting the industrial policy. 
We have given our recommendations on behalf of the industry. And I must say that uh, the Minister of Industries is always uh, keeping BCCI in close contact for whatever uh, policy reforms or advocacy is required. And we are thankful to the Honorable Minister for that. And from what we hear from you, we can understand that uh, uh, a term plan for re rehabilitation uh, of the reconditioned car sector with appropriate guidance needs to come from the industry's ministry, as you rightly said, for 40 years, 50 years, you have nurtured this industry. This cannot just go away overnight. And definitely, uh, that is why we are having this inclusive stakeholder consultation. Now, before we go into the country perspective and move on to the uh, speakers, we have our special speakers from uh, the Japan and the United States. Uh, I would like to bring in uh, another speaker with us who has joined us from the uh, from Toronto. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting for this late hour. We have uh, with us Mr. Sayed Imtiaz Hussain. Um, Sir, if you could unmute yourself, uh, let me allow you to introduce Mr. Imtiaz, uh, Imtiaz Ahmed. Sorry, sorry. Mr. Imtiaz Ahmed, uh, he has uh, 40 years of industry experience in uh, multi-processor based systems development in new line products such as air traffic control. Uh, in fact, uh, he's had work experience in the United Kingdom, in the United States, as well as the uh, Toronto, where they work in aerospace and transport Canada aviation. Um, Logitech, Verizon Wireless, Honeywell, and various companies. He also assisted in setting up the uh, Hitachi plant in Michigan, USA. Um, if I could uh, request you to keep your speech within the shortest possible frame of time so we can have the rest of the speakers join in. So we would like to bring, open the floor to Mr. Imtiaz. Sir, uh, uh, yeah, uh, good morning, everybody. I'm now located in uh, Michigan, in, in USA. As you know, Michigan is the capital, the automotive capital of USA. There are hundreds of industries all over Michigan. There are big GM plants, Chrysler, Toyota, Nissan. It's a big whole of Michigan is all automotive industry. And I'm working here as a consultant and have been working in Michigan uh, for the last four or five years. In this panel, I like to uh, draw the attention of the Honorable Minister and His Excellency, three alphabets which will develop, which will enhance the economy of Bangladesh and create huge job opportunities. And these words are ECU, Electronic Control Unit. In a modern vehicle, there are more than 70 ECUs used in a, in a, in a vehicle. BMW used 220 ECUs. The modern vehicle is and there are uh, more than 9,000 uh, computer science and engineering graduates uh, getting graduated every year from Bangladesh, but none of them are aware of the importance of computers in modern vehicles. An industry which uh, can be created in Bangladesh to export ECUs from Bangladesh, electronic control unit to United States, to Europe, and to Japan. Japan is also, as you know, is a big manufacturer of you know, vehicles. And all this panel we are hearing, we are always, what I observed was we are talking from a consumer perspective. It is high time that Bangladeshi people become aware, not only are a consumer, but we are going to become a manufacturer of ECUs, electronic control units, which are used in the vehicles. And uh, for the last four years, I have been, uh, cooperating or encouraging the universities in Bangladesh, like Dhaka University, the Engineering University, Brat, North South University, and a few other universities. And I have donated lab equipment and computer kits for them to develop ECUs, electronic control units for vehicles, for the industries here in Michigan. And uh, uh, in, in the, in, the, in the development of ECUs, you do not need any big investment. The biggest investment is the human brain because it's all about the programming. For example, an ECU hardware costs only about $20 to $30. But to, to develop the software needed in the ECU, it, the normal budget is between $6 million to you know, $10 million just to develop. So I was... Uh, one of the, the developers of supporting Hitachi here in Michigan, uh, which supplies uh, TCM, Transmission Control Module, uh, 
Patek we uh, lost him. Mr. Mtiaz, are you still with us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us now, Mr. Mtiaz? Sir, we need disconnect. Turning off your video and speak. Can you hear us now? I think we will try and come back to him if he gets connected again. Um, let's, um, we have already had so much time. Uh, we heard from our valuable speakers today. At this point of time, I would like to hear from our good friend, our uh, good friend of the government, good friend of the private sector. We have Mr. Hayakawa Yuho of Japan, uh, JICA. Uh, sir, we would like to hear your perspective on the industry. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Minister, uh, Minister of Industries, uh, Mr. Nur uh, Mahmoud Humayun, uh, MP, uh, His Excellency Mr. Ito Naoki, uh, Japanese Ambassador to Bangladesh, uh, distinguished organizers and participants. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, uh, and good morning. First of all, I'd like to commend the keynote presentation made by Mr. Taskin Ahmed, uh, which was very, very much inspiring and powerful as presented by the keynote part, uh, presenter. Uh, concerning the huge domestic demand boosted by the constant economic growth, as well as the cheaper labor costs, Bangladesh has a great potential for developing automobile, automobile industry. Because of uh, its backward uh, linkage effect, uh, automobile industry can not only increase huge number of employment, but also promote the development of supporting industries and build human skills, both of which will be driving force to diversify and to advance industries in Bangladesh. On the, on the other hand, uh, we need to admit that uh, there exist a strong car manufacturing, strong car manufacturers in other countries, and they're in harsh competition in regional export market. Therefore, it is very necessary for government of Bangladesh to carefully implement appropriate industrial policies in proper sequence in order to foster a domestic car manufacturing industry in Bangladesh. Other countries such as Thailand and Indonesia had already carried out industrial policies to protect and nurture the infant industry of automobile production. In policies of those former successful countries, there, there are uh, some common elements. Uh, JICA's uh, technical cooperation project identified there were the following three key policy ingredients in those countries. First and foremost is providing investment incentives for automobile manufacturing companies to invest in Bangladesh, including tax incentives. And second is a realistic, realistic and gradual increase of local contribution ratio. In order to encourage the domestic car manufacturing uh, manufacturers quickly, it is natural for a government to demand high local content ratio, but unrealistically high target will not only deter the concretization of investment of automobile companies. Uh, will, uh, I mean the, but I mean, I mean the uh, unrealistically high target will just uh, deter the concretization of investment of automobile companies and. Uh, uh, carefully designed roadmap for local contribution ratio uh, that is incremental and practical is uh, practical is cru crucially important. And third is regulating the uh, import of used cars, as uh, uh, the uh, represent representative of Barbida already mentioned. Uh, there are uh, successful experiences in many other countries which uh, restricted uh, import or import of reconditioned automobiles in order for growing up their domestic automobile production in, in one sea. However, uh, what we need to have in mind is that the remaining time left for building this industry in Bangladesh may not be so long. We need to hurry up. One reason is the economy of scale. It works in automobile industries. You know, manufacturers which achieve a certain level of production scale can reduce the manufacturing costs and win a larger share of the market. Uh, on the other hand, you know, the uh, manufacturing companies which can produce a limited number of vehicles cannot get their sufficient profit and be forced to 
exit from the market. And Bangladesh is a newcomer and a catch up in this industry. And uh, there is a potential competition with other countries, which are also nurturing car manufacturing industries. In this contest, earlier starters will take better position. So time really matters. The, another reason is graduation from LDC status in 2026. You know, Bangladesh may seek, may seek uh, for FTAs with other countries and regions in order to secure export opportunities uh, of some industries such as RMGs. However, we need to have in mind that FTAs usually works favorably for industries with higher competitiveness and less favorable, favorably to industries with less competitiveness or infant industries. So therefore it is uh, imperative for the automobile industry in Bangladesh, including the supporting industries to realize the economy of scale as soon as possible. For that purpose, we think it is important for the government to announce its automobile industry policy soon. It will become a trigger to demonstrate it, its serious commitment, a proper policy framework and roadmap to provide an excellent investment environment towards the potential investors, uh, global manufacturing companies, as well as domestic business entities. We appreciate the strong initiative of the government to finalize the automobile policy. There, under the uh, big picture of automobile industry policy, detailed policies should be carefully formulated and uh, implemented. Since the situation changes day by day in this sector, even after the approval of the uh, industry policy, the government should uh, continue to keep our mechanism uh, uh, for continuous dialogues uh, between relevant authorities and related private companies and uh, industries. This mechanism can help the government uh, grasp real and the changing situation and the real needs of private companies and investors on the ground to formulate uh, realistic and proper policies in timely manner. In this sense, today's seminar also provides a very important opportunity for us. So I would like to express my deep gratitude to the organizers to, of uh, this event. In summary, I have already mentioned the following points, uh, five points as a key for promoting car manufacturing industry. That is a better environment to attract investment of foreign manufacturers as an entry point. And the second is a careful sequencing of policies to promote localization. And the third is a earlier start of implementation of industrial policies as soon as possible. Fourth is announcement of automobile industry policy and the government's commitment. And the, Five is the proper and continuous mechanism of dialogues with relevant private companies and investors. So with the huge potential of this country, as well as correct policies to be chosen and implemented, there will be a bright future uh, ahead in our car manufacturing in this country. I believe that the development of the domestic automobile industry can be and will be a strong driver to change the landscape of the Bangladesh industries. So thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to be a part of this uh, wonderful dialogue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Hayakawa-san. It was wonderful hearing from you. Sorry, we got cut off from Mr. Imtiaz Ahmed uh, last time. I would, sir, I would request you to unmute yourself and wrap up within one minute. You wanted to share your views. We got cut off. We've got two more speakers after you. Mr. Imtiaz Ahmed, back to you. Yes, the important uh, information I want to convey to the Honorable Minister is to support the universities in Bangladesh in the development of automotive ECU, export-oriented ECUs, electronic control units. These are mainly software writing the software. It's like a part of the software industry because extensive amount of software is used in modern vehicles and there are 9,000 uh, computer science and engineering graduates uh, coming out from the universities in Bangladesh, and they can be massively employed in the development and export of ECUs, automotive ECUs, to USA, Europe, and Japan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ndiaz. Thank you for that. Would uh, everybody hear me that? Because yes, we did. We will definitely. Yes. So, uh, the most important word. Yes. Yeah. 
I'm just trying to wrap up with the speakers here. Before I do, I want to move on. Uh, just for your information, we are going to prepare an outcome report and submit it to the Honorable Minister because we have had a lot of recommendations coming here today. We want to share with the US Embassy. We want to share with the Embassy of Japan. So before we move on to our guest of honor and special guest, we have another friend of ours, Mr. John Dunham, the Economic Unit Chief of the US Embassy in Bangladesh. Sir, over to you. Okay, thank you very much. I, I assume you can hear me, yes? Perfect, loud and clear. Okay, very good. Uh, Honorable Minister of Ind Industries, Mr. Nurul Majid Mahmoud Humayun, uh, His, Your Excellency Ambassador Ito Naoki, uh, Mr. Rizwan Ahmed, uh, Riz, Riz, Rizwan uh, Rahman, President of DCCI, and other guests. Assalamu alaikum wa Ramadan Karim. I'm very pleased to, to be here today. I would especially, I will try to be as brief as possible while still getting my main points uh, to you all. Um, I, I, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Ridwan for, for including the US Embassy in this discussion and Mr. Ta, uh, Taskeel Ahmed for the very interesting presentation. Um, unlike many of the other distinguished panelists in this discussion, uh, I, am not, uh, I am not engaged in the auto industry. However, I did have one experience with it uh, when I was a student, which was a very long time ago. Uh, when I was a student, I worked in an automotive parts factory in the state of Michigan uh, to, to, to earn some money to help pay for my university tuition. What I learned from this experience is, is the importance of the vast network of small and medium enterprises that support the automotive industry. The factory where I was working had perhaps 20 or 30 employees, very small, yet it was a vital link in the supply chain for the automotive, uh, automotive industry uh, 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 facilities in Detroit. So, it, so that was something that, I really, that really came home to me. And I really appreciate that uh, the presentation included the, the Honorable Prime Minister's support for light engineering uh, as a key area for Bangladesh to, to diversify its, uh, its economy and its export market. Uh, as we all know, Bangladesh has done very well in the last few years and in the last few decades with its economic growth. And even during the pandemic, Bangladesh has continued to show a positive growth. Uh, the RMG industry has done bang very well for Bangladesh, but to continue this rapid growth uh, in, in Bangladesh, it will be necessary to diversify the economy and the export market. Fortunately, Bangladesh has, a very, uh, has, has the correct ingredients for, for economic diversification and, and further growth. A uh, very entrepreneurial population, increasing uh, savvy of, of IT and other, other vital sectors. Um, and uh, this, this growth can continue as long as the private sector is given the, the space it needs and, the, and is fa the facilities it needs to, to advance this growth. Uh, uh, our, the US Agency for International Development, USAID, takes a very important approach to the private sector. It involves the private sector in much of our development work uh, in health education, uh, as well as even in our, some of our humanitarian uh, assistance. Um, so I only have a few minutes, so I, I just would like to close with this, this thought. So Bangladesh is emerging from a low-income country to a middle-income country. It has many examples to follow. Many other countries, particularly in the Asia-Pacific region, have taken the similar path that Bangladesh can now learn from. Some of these countries have continued to grow from middle income and have advanced into high income uh, countries. Others have been caught in the middle income trap. So I urge, I urge the government of Bangladesh to carefully tailor its, its industrial policy, its tax policy, its trade policy, its investment policy, learn from the examples of of the other countries who have, who have advanced to where, where Bangladesh hopes to go. Um, 
the private sector and the small and medium enterprises will play a very vital role in this in this advancement. So, and I urge uh, extensive cooperation between the government of Bangladesh and the private sector and valuable associations such as DCCI to come up with the, with the, the, the ideal policies to advance that, that, uh, that economic growth, which we all know that Bangladesh is very capable of. My final thought, the last year has been very uncertain in the global economy. The years ahead will continue to be un uncertain. Uh, during, this un during this time, the relationship between the United States and Bangladesh has never been more vital. We see Bangladesh as an extremely important part partner in advancing prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region and, and in developing an open and rules-based system to include further prosperity. Bangladesh's prosperity is extremely important to the United States. And I would like to close with that thought. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, that was very thoughtful of you. Your high regards for Bangladesh, and we look forward uh, to your continued cooperation uh, in the dire times the whole world is going through. So uh, with the kind permission of our today's guest of honor and today's chief guest, I would like to wrap up the moderation today. Uh, just to go through a brief of what has been discussed today and uh, the gist of that um, I got from hearing from all the speakers, I've taken some small notes down. So for instance, the policy that we're talking about, the automobile policy, it needs to be say roughly 20 years time and segmented in two phases. Uh, for example, the assembly and the value addition through manufacturing. And then the government can actually allow setting up uh, joint ventures for parts manufacturing to create local skills and spare parts business for localization of the industry that also creates the backward linkage and the forward linkage of the industry. A uh, minimum of uh, five to 10 years of tariff policy uh, to support the assembly and manufacturing of these very vehicles. And then preferential corporate tax, it is a new industry. So definitely at a reduced rate uh, with including a tax holiday of at least 10 years or so for uh, on the automobile assembling and uh, manufacturing ventures and specifically in the special economic zones in Bangladesh that can also create another promotion of the economic zones. We can have an automobile zone uh, and which can be separately uh, treated to encourage the local vehicle entrepreneurs. And uh, foreign companies can also be facilitated in these uh, zones with the provision of all sorts of infrastructure support uh, and the condition to sell uh, half of production at the local market. So that also creates the uh, bust in the economy as well. And to provide a five-year um, uh, tax exemption to encourage NRB experts to work in our automobile industry. We have heard our experts today and they have come in with recommendations uh, for uh, creating uh, uh, universities uh, to uh, uh, help students uh, create these uh, ECUs. They, they can use a training ground and this can be also used to bridge the gap between industry and academia. Uh, also, we heard from our Barbida where they mentioned that there needs to be uh, uh, some sort of uh, appropriate guidance for the rehabilitation of the uh, reconditioned car industry. And uh, there has to be um, a roadmap on developing safety standards and mechanisms to support implementation of safety regulations, uh, <clears throat> safety regulations, uh, vendor development, and of course, uh, uh, future export market access. And that also helps in our export diversification, which we are always talking about when it comes to um, um, ex increasing our export basket. And as mentioned in the draft policy, we need to constitute uh, national automotive councils to support the relevant research in this sector and separate uh, national automobiles uh, skills development council. And of course, it, it should include all these uh, valuable uh, contributors of the economy here today, uh, all these large industrialists, the private sector and the public sector as well. So I believe that uh, all these put together can definitely show brighter days for the industries in the days ahead, in the days to come. I thank you all for your patient hearing. We would now uh, like to humbly request uh, His Excellency, Mr. Ito Naoki, the ambassador of Japan to grace the occasion and uh, deliver his valued remarks. Well, thank you uh, very much. Honorable Chief Guest, uh, Mr. Nurul Majid Muhammad Muhammad Humayun, Minister of Industry, Mr. Rizwan Rahman, uh, President of uh, DCCI, distinguished keynote presenter and discussants, uh, respective participants. Assalamu alaikum. 
Shibo Shokal and good morning. So it gives me a great pleasure to join you today. I feel so honored to share my views uh, with you on such an important topic for the development of Bangladesh economy in the future. First of all, I should like to commend the initiative uh, taken by Mr. Rizwan Rahman, president of DCCI and senior members of uh, Dhaka Chamber to host this webinar. This dialogue is timely as the Ministry of Industry is about to launch the autom automobile industry development policy. This is significant since many, if not all, of key stakeholders participated uh, here today. No doubt, the development of the automotive industry is significant and focused policy formulation will be a milestone for progress. The automotive industry played an important role in many countries to achieve their economic growth as the key industrial sector, which including parts and intermediary goods suppliers has a wider impact on the economy and employment. If you look at the history of industrialization in Europe, North America, Japan, East Asia, and ASEAN countries, the automotive industry was the mainstay. In Japan, auto and auto parts industries have led to the development of a skilled workforce. Can Bangladesh follow the same path? Yes, there is a strong possibility. And I would say it depends upon what and how the government and private sector do towards the end during this decade. When you talk about the need for diversification of industries here, the automobile sector's growth is important together with other sectors such as light engineering and agriculture-based industry. On 26th of March, I had the opportunity to attend a classic cars exhibition event in Baridara, Dhaka, as part of the wonderful celebrations of the 50th anniversary of the independence. The oldest car there was a 1917 Austin. It's not comparable, but Japanese cars which are manufactured from the late 1960s to 1980s were also lined up. I saw a 1978 Mitsubishi Lancer, which was then a vehicle for a cabinet minister, and also came across a 1988 Nissan President, which was imported by President Ershad. These speak well for the trust and confidence in Japanese cars by the people of Bangladesh, even from its early days. I certainly expect Japanese auto companies will be proactive in the automobile industry development here in this country. In parallel to formulating its automotive industry policy, the Ministry of Industry provided opportunities for foreign companies to discuss their possible business operations in Bangladesh. Some of the Japanese auto companies showed their interest and it was Mitsubishi Motors Corporation, MMC, which explored the possibility of making a new investment to establish a CKD assembly plant. At the end of March last month, I learned the good news that Mitsubishi, MMC, and the Ministry of Industry reached an agreement in principle to sign an MOU for a joint feasibility study on the viability of investing in the manufacturing plant. Once the viability is confirmed, and this investment plan is materialized, that would immensely contribute to technology transfer and the cre creation of big job opportunities. Since this is a CKD plant, its manufacturing process includes welding and painting as well as final assembling. Localization of parts supply would be very much in its sight with the increase of the scale of annual products. It is my earnest hope that as soon as the current lockdown is lifted, the MOU will be signed between MMC and the Ministry of Industry so that they can set to the joint feasibility study soon. Mitsubishi has a long history of car manufacturing. Mitsubishi's Model A was on road in 1917, which was the first series production car in Japan. I know Mitsubishi Pajero has been loved by government officials here. And as you may know, the first mass production electric vehicle in the world was Mitsubishi's iMeev back in 2009. Now, Mitsubishi is considering to manufacture a national brand car for Bangladesh. 
Before concluding my remarks, let me say the CKD investment will help contribute to Bangladesh's industrialization, diversification of manufacturing sectors, and the eventual export of automobiles. Consequently, this project could be a strong driving force for economic development. Two additional points would hold a key to the success of Mitsubishi's making the national brand car for Bangladesh. First, early adoption of the policy and initiation of consultations among relevant ministries and agencies to come up with the policy support and incentives on tax, tariffs, and retail. And second, balanced expansion of domestic production and import of cars in due consideration to market needs and trend. I expect both domestic production and import will grow as consumer demands go up. At the same time, I would like to emphasize that towards future economic development, it would be crucial to enhance domestic auto production and nurture local intermediary part suppliers. I wish to add that in neighboring countries, restrictions on the import of reconditioned cars have been in place in one way or another to give a space for domestic production to grow. The automobile market in Bangladesh is expected to grow in the order of 100,000 by 2030, which will be more than twice as large as the current size of the market. It has been analyzed that 100,000 is the threshold beyond which domestic production of new cars will become the main source of supply to the market. As this economy grows rapidly, by the end of this decade, per capita income will reach 4,000 US dollars doubling the current level. It is said that after per capita income reaches 3,000 US dollars, the auto market expands exponentially. I understand that the eight five year plan forecast that in 2025 per capita GDP will stand at 3,104 US dollars. This investment decision to produce national brand cars for Bangladesh would mean three things confidence in the Bangladesh economy, high expectation on growth potentials, and appreciation for the continued improvement of the policy framework and investment climate for the country. Last but not least, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to Minister Humayun for his strong leadership and cordial support, which have brought us thus far. The Japanese government will continue to work closely with the government of Bangladesh. We should collaborate further for the expansion of our company's operations and FDIs and workforce development. I thank Dhaka Chamber for inviting me today and giving me this wonderful opportunity. I certainly look forward to continued dialogue with DCCI and other stakeholders on industrialization and investment strategy. Onek Donabad, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Naoki. It's wonderful to have heard the news about Mr. Bishi coming into Bangladesh, uh, signing these agreements. And needless to mention, our, uh, our minister, who is a very pro-private sector, pro-industrial policy friendly minister, I think he is going to provide us with all the incentives and support for all these foreign companies to come into Bangladesh and reap the demographic dividends of what Bangladesh actually has to offer us. And uh, needless to mention, uh, I hope that these kind of collaborations will uh, create more awareness in the um, uh, other countries. We have the United States here with us today. Maybe one day Ford is going to come set up shop in Bangladesh. One day Camaro is going to come set up shop in Bangladesh. It's, it's not impossible. The future is very near. And nowadays it's very much possible. So without further ado, uh, we have all been humbly, uh, patiently waiting to hear uh, the, today's chief guest. Uh, first of all, I would like to humbly thank him for his patience and he has been here with us for the last 90 minutes he's been patiently listening to every single speaker and uh, we would not like to take any much more time of yours sir we would like to you to grace the occasion as our chief guest and say a few words honorable minister sir thank you i'm really pleased i have very minutely heard everybody's all the speakers Especially our guest of honor, Mr. Ito Naoki Ambassador, Embassy of Japan. Already 
we had cooperation regarding the drafting of our automotive policy. They are helping us in all the way. So thank you, Mr. Rizwan, Mr. President, this Dhaka Chamber and all the speakers, especially Mr. Taskin Ahmed of IFAD, who has very elaborately explained in his opening speaker and presented his papers. And other people, my Prabhuti MD Tohitu Zaman, he has also expressed and he has given his our policy matter of the government, what we are doing. And especially Mr. Mathieu Rahman, he's also working very seriously with this automatic policy. And another very experienced man, Mr. Abdul Haq, president of Barbida. He has also given his views about the total marketing policy and whatever that is what to do. I have heard him very minority. Then all, and especially our, another guest, Mr. John Dunham, Economic and Indo-Pacific Affairs Unit Chief, Embassy of the United States of America for his good remarks. They have all suggested in different way. We, now I want to say that we are passing a very difficult time. We have started, you know, our economy size, everything there's as we are passing through the program, the year-long celebrations of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Rahman's part, centenary and golden jubilee of Bangladesh independence. So let me begin by remembering the greatest Bengali ever, the father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Rahman, with deep reference and homage to his tremendous sacrifice for the sake of freedom and economic emancipation of the people of Bangladesh. And now we are having 50 years of our independence. Already we have participated. So it is an, indeed a great pleasure for me to be here at the webinar on automobile industry development, present situation and future prospects organized by the Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Again, I thank Mr. Rizal I'm impressed and would like to give my heartiest thanks to all the speakers organizing such an important and timely event on automobile industry to discuss the present situation and consult with distinguished discussions for realizing the prospects of the industry in Bangladesh in the future. Bangladesh economy is growing rapidly and we are trying to keep pace with the development of other countries of the world. Last year, although we have faced a shock of COVID-19 with shrinks and economic growth, but ended up at 5.24 GDP growth. And this year also, the second wave of COVID is going over Bangladesh, and we are hopeful with the prompt leadership and prudent direction of Honorable Prime Minister of Government of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina, who will be able to achieve the targeted growth rate in this year. We are going to be graduated from less developing country to developing country by 2026 under the visionary leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister. We are highly motivated to reach the goals of SDGs by 2030 and become a developed country by 2041. Gentlemen, Purchasing power of the people has shown a rise as per capita income reached the US dollar 2064.64 dollar. This increased purchasing power is motivating people to procure personal vehicle as a safe mode of transport. Car purchase is increasingly gradually and as demand is growing, to support this higher demand, and automobile manufacturers are showing interest to set up plants for local production. We have analyzed this industry to see their current state of state and what the future 
holds for them. And drafting of an automobile policy is in under process for future development of this industry, as I have already mentioned. Bangladesh has around 12 million people in the medium income generating basket, and this segment of the population is growing very fast by 10% a year. Many of these potential customers are not getting their desired vehicles. As we are moving towards into a developing countries, in line with this growth, we are also planning to build our own auto manufacturing industry to foster the domestic needs at an affordable price. We believe it is also needed to encourage industrialists of home and abroad to set up spare parts and tools manufacturing plants here in economic zones that can cater a huge demand of automobile manufacturing industry. As our light engineering, you know, is developing, we have given importance to that. At present, almost all cars are imported from different countries, significantly from Japan, South Korea, and China. We also keep close eye on in it since it is a big source of revenue for Bangladesh and we try to balance the interest of the importers and potential manufacturers and create competitive market for all sort of stakeholders of automobile sectors value chain in Bangladesh. We believe that industrialization helps a country to develop at a greater scale and we are relentlessly working to promote the develop and develop the industry in Bangladesh. We are trying to facilitate foreign investments, investors to invest in this industry and make our export basket stronger than ever. We acknowledge the research and innovation is very important for the development of the this industries as well for the other allied industries to keep ourselves globally competitive we are very much positive to take recommendations from this webinar and is if found necessary we will formulate the comprehensive policy to support the automobile industry development. I would like to thank you all again for inviting me here today and taking the initiative to advocate the automobile industry in flourish. Thank you all. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangladesh, long live Bangladesh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. It was an absolute pleasure to have your uh, confidence in the industry and your support uh, to the private sector uh, knows no bounds and we are hopeful that you will come up with a fruitful policy for these investors that have gathered here today, which will support the industrialization of Bangladesh, the diversification of the uh, industry. So we are very hopeful on that. Without further ado, I would like to request my dear colleague, Mr. N.K. Mubin, the Senior Vice President uh, of the Dhaka Chamber of Commerce, to give his uh, vote of thanks and close the event. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. On behalf of Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I would like to take the privilege to extend my profound thanks to all for your participations and constructive discussions. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the Chief Guest, Mr. Nurul Majid Mahmood Humayun, MP, Honorable Minister, Ministry of Industries, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, for his realistic guidance and direction to import substitute industry development for local and export market. I'd also like to express my deep-rooted thanks to the guest of honor, His Excellency Mr. Ito Naoki, Ambassador of Japan in Bangladesh. Furthermore, I would like to extend my thanks to the keynote speaker, Mr. Taskin Ahmed, Deputy Managing Director, EPOD Group, for enlightening us with his thoughts and insights. And also thanks to distinguished panel discussions and all the participants for their valued participation. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Meanwhile, the discussions have shed lights on making long-term policy, developing action plans, tax and tariff policy structure consideration, making a total ecosystem for enabling Bangladesh, setting up automobile manufacturing plants here, creating a skilled workforce for the automobile industry, developing backward linkage industry, and investing more on research and innovation. We believe that the economic transformations, especially industrialization, helps a country to develop a greater scale and steer our economy. Distinguished guests, the recommendations emerged from this webinar will help the concerned authority to expedite and make more effective decisions for the development of comprehensive policy to support the untapped potentials of the automobile industry. Before concluding, I would like to thank again, Honorable Chief Guest, keynote speaker, discussions, and all the distinguished guests and participants for participating in this webinar. Thanking you, Allah Hafiz. Thank you. Honorable Minister, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. John, thank you. Thank you very much. Sam, thank you. Raskin Bhai, thank you. Akbar, thank you. 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 Thank you.